Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gunn. To my left, Charles Davis. And Charles, you focus on this Bengal team entering play. And they come in losers of two straight, so they're trying to right the ship here a little bit. They're teetering a little bit, aren't they? And now things could really go south if they lose this game, so they understand the importance of playing well and stopping this streak. On the other side of the field for the visiting box, they come in feeling good after back-to-back -back victories. And the offense, my goodness, over 50 points in the win last weekend. When you do that, you're not going to lose very many games, maybe not any games. Both of these teams about to reach the halfway point of this NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. This will be fielded at the 6. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Here come the Bengals now to take over. Leading them out at QB is the former North Carolina Tar Heel, Mitchell Trubisky. And the numbers were not pretty. I mean, they don't look right. When you throw two interceptions, no touchdown passes, there's no way to really make that work. But I thought there were a lot of positives in watching his game tape. I think he's close to putting on a good performance. Let's see if he can flip those numbers around in this game. And, of course, rally his team to a win. So first and 10 now from the 30. Todd Gurley, and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Tyrone Crawford in on the tackle. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times, and what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. I think a block in the back. Offense. So this will be accepted as it moves Still the offense down. backwards. <laughs> On second down, Trubisky. He'll throw underneath for Gurley. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Give him three on the play, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. They've got good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. I don't know what happened last week to, to really hurt their performance and, and hold down their production, but I would dare say that this week in practice, there's a lot of talk about how they're going to increase their proficiency. And that was a good start getting the playmakers involved. You mentioned that to me pregame. That's what they did there. Yeah, I think a lot of people think the coaching staff really gets on them, and that's how they motivate them. Most of these guys are self-motivated. They have a lot of pride in their performance. 18 yards on his first catch of the game. It's a first down. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Got the guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. Full start, offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still first down. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. <laughs> Following the penalty, it's Gurley. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game, so what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room to run. On second down, here's Trubisky. The left side caught by Diggs. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series... And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Derek Wolf with a big-time sack on third down. 
And it'll be a loss of seven. And that's their first sack of this game. But how about last week? Six sacks. Great coverage downfield, which helped that pass rush. They are really working in sync right now. On fourth down, here's the veteran Shane Leckler to punt it away. Yeah, that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. time with Freeman and he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26 north of 100 yards the two scores and you know you got to give a lot of credit to the O-line we talked a lot about him but offensive line was good too they're obviously in sync with each other whether it's zone blocking power running game no matter what he understands how to read them and find the creases that they provide on third down that's Freeman, and he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Well, partner, none of these runs individually have added up to a whole lot. Now three plays, all three short runs, but together a first down. Yeah, it's amazing how the narrative changes when you string them together. On first and ten, it's Ryan. And he fires one that's intercepted. He's picked off of his own 46. And they'll take over inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. And he takes it down to the 40 with a pickup of four. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Now Trubisky to throw on second. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Garrett Selleck, the tight end, was the target. Third down here. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Complete, he finds Bray. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A good pick up there, a 22. I know I spent a lot of time talking about how tight ends in a lot of cases now are pumped up wide receivers. But they're still big people. He used that frame right there to absorb a really big hit on him and held on to the ball. The first chance in the red zone for the Bengals now. They have a first and 10 at the 18. Now a handoff for Earl. And they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. Play action. It's Trubisky. And they're going to get him. He's sacked back around the 28. Vaughn Miller in there to get him. And that's sack number six for him on the year. I spent a lot of extra time preparing for this game, watching this offensive line, because they gave up five sacks last week in their loss. They just gave up another one now. They don't seem to be working together as a cohesive unit. Right? Four guys might have it right, but the fifth guy is giving something up. They've got to find a way to all get on the same page. Complete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. 
he was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. And the kick by Rosas is good. And the Bengals are on the board first here. It's 3 0. So that's a seven play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. And things were a little leaky in the beginning on that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to the goal line, things stiffened a little bit and forced the field goal. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27 yard line. Matt Ryan in the offense heading back onto the field. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Mike Daniels makes the tackle. On third down, it's Freeman. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. He lost two, and it brings up four. They'll indeed go for it with Ryan. He completes it to Bryan. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Bucks in possession of the football as we begin the second quarter. And they've got it here with a first down. A couple of first downs has the football positioned at the 43 as they come up first and 10. They run, Devontae Freeman. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. But forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football. On second down, here's Ryan. And he connects with Vance McDonald. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. First time they've hooked up here. Good for 17 at a first down. This is Freeman. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. the play fake to Freeman it's Ryan and oh look at that a diving catch he got 18 yards out of that one and it gets him a new set of downs when you're a player of his stature you don't just circle the games on your team's calendar you circle, circle the, the Pro Bowl <laughs> without a doubt that's a game that you just figure you're going to be in each and every year that's because of catches like that that's why he goes on first down Ryan this will be caught inside the 10. And they work this near the 5. He'll be stopped at the 6. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. I think it all came together there. In breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Ryan. Forced out to his left. And he will score. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Matt Ryan, touchdown number 15 of the year. And the Bucs are able to strike for six. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. So a quarterback scramble, certainly a pass play, but he saw something, tucked it, and got in the end zone. A lot of quarterbacks, when they scramble, they're scrambling to create more time to throw the ball downfield. In this situation, as you noted, he tucked it and took off. Great play by him. 
Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. They go play action here on first down. Looking for Diggs, and it's intercepted. It's the former Patriot, Devin McCourty. And he brings it back to right around the 26-yard line. Oh, well, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. Here's Freeman. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Moving backwards on first down, never a good thing. What does that do for the mindset on second down? Well, it changes your play call, definitely, because as a play call, you're advancing yourself, thinking, okay, we're going to get a gain here. Now you've got to go back in reverse, come up with something to pick up not just the yardage lost, but gain a few extra. On second down, Ryan. This will be caught inside the 10. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Catch number 4 for him on the afternoon, and it'll give him a first down. and goal. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown Buccaneers. Jordan Matthews his first touchdown on the year. And the Buccaneers here finding a way to stretch their lead. Brandon, my man, just one sentence for that one. Clinic. And that's what they've done. They lead the league in points per game this season, but it's been quick strike ability as we saw on that drive. I think they're actually intimidating defenses because they're back on their heels right away, wondering where it's going to come from, how they're going to hit them. This group is well organized, well coached, and extremely confident in what they do. unit is out on the field and they will send this one away this will be taken to the back of the end zone and no run back here this will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25 yard line and this offense led by Mitchell Trubisky going to make their way back out there he's got to dig deep here doesn't he teams losing he's not playing well either and they always tell you don't press you'll make things a little bit worse but in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. A nice gain of 21 yards. He's been the forgotten man in this first half. Not a guy you want to forget. Not only his first catch, first time they've targeted him. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Not because at all. those are the types of plays that he provides. When he does come alive, when they do look his way, not only is it a big catch, it's a first down. Steps away and taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. It's a gain of 13, and the Bengals have a first down. I think the last two plays really illustrate how difficult it is to game plan against this guy because you know he can throw the football, 
but how about his use of legs as well? What we call those broken plays, you can't account for them. Yeah, those plays, those two that you just mentioned, a microcosm really of how he can hurt you. Well, they don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. On first down, it's Gurley. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. one down to about the 40. A minute 58 to go in this first half of play. We'll come back to Cincinnati after this. Coming up at halftime, we remind you once again that we're going to check in with Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL as we reach now, hard to believe, the halfway point of the season. Time flying. It certainly is. Time to get the sweaters out, my man. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now Trubisky on first down. Dumps it off to Gurley. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. Call it a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll make it a second down. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the start. end zone. Offense. And that'll set him back five. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Defensively, as he'll be hit and taken down in the backfield. Gerald McCoy is so slippery and elusive in the interior of the defense. I don't care who has the assignment to block him. It usually ends up having to take at least two. And most of the time, that's not enough either. Witness that tackle for a loss. Now Trubisky on third and long. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. It's a four-yard pickup, and that'll bring up fourth down. Well, this is how you shake the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw ten interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident and keep flinging it. I'll just figure there's something wrong with the football. this one through and a second field goal here cuts their deficit to 14 to 6 now so the three points here they're still down but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half solid return pretty good field position they'll start at the 32 yard line the second quarter score from KC. It's the Chiefs out to an early lead over the Broncos. And we'll keep you abreast of how that one shakes out. Des Bryant now, he gears up to help lead this offense again. He's doing what he's capable of, having a solid game. Not, not the most amazing game. He's not over 100 yards, but a good game so far. And you just know that mentally, he feels like he's one catch away from turning it into a great game and starting on that road. And the defenders are well aware of that, too. They've got to figure out a way to not let that escalate. Keep him right in this zone here and call it a day. Because otherwise, he can really decimate them. Better believe they are well aware of his playmaking ability. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Buccaneers out on top. 
As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Hi again, everybody. Let's get you caught up with what's going on around the league here in the unofficial Midway Point, week eight of the NFL season. We'll start in the Meadowlands, an NFC East battle that pits Washington against the New York football Giants. And it's the Giants who are out in front in the second quarter. Two touchdown passes there for Marcus Mariota. From there, we head over to the Windy City. Check on the Bears at home, Soldier Field. And it's the visiting Jets who have the lead in that one. Nick Foles with a couple of touchdown passes. Finally, let's get down to Houston. Check on the Texans at home at NRG Stadium. And it was the visiting Dolph. Well, why don't we hold off on the halftime update after all? Seems like everyone's ready to go here for the second half in week eight in the NFL. The return man, Chris Moore. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start in the third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters, as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you're all looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. Now it's Freeman. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. Nine yards on the pickup that time, so he got more than half of it back, but it's still pick they needed they would have loved one there but at least it does get them to fourth down here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like in the half? Because no, that, that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> Off the play fake, here's Trubisky. And down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. Von Miller, he's the one to get him, and that's sack number seven for him on the year. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than... And he can't get away. Gurley couldn't escape it. And that's going to be a safety. And Charles, at some point, you can't keep worrying about big play. Can this be perfect? You just have to get the ball out of the end zone. And in the offensive huddle, that was discussed when they called the play. Just get out of the end zone. But you know what's interesting? A lot of the times in the defensive huddle, they actually call a set Free kick and then say at the end of it, he can get team. a safety. So it's preached, it's coached, it's thought about. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Automatic first down. They toss to Freeman. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? 
has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Personal foul, face mask, defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get down. the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and 10. Receiver complete. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. They give them 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. This is Freeman on first and 10. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Sean Williams that time in on the stop. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts. Being able to diagnose runner pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. On second down, Freeman. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Craig Robertson in on the stop. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. The Bucks on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and four. They'll run it. Here's Anderson. Anderson a first down and more. And all the way down to the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. Now they'll throw it with Ryan. And he pulls it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. Des Bryant with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Bucs are going to add on to their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical, that's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And the last time they had the football, they surrendered two points on the safety. They don't want to do that one again. No, not at all. It's almost like a bases clearing double, isn't it? Give up a couple of runs. Sure. <laughs> just, mess, just messes things up for you offensively. But now they've got to go ahead, take it, set it aside, and move forward. Now a play fake here on first down. He's got the connection over the middle of the Dins. The 30, 10, and all the way in for a Cincinnati score. Stephon Diggs, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Bengals are able to draw a bit closer. Well, they had their chances in the first half, you remember, but had to settle for two field goals. This time, they come away with six. I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown because the field goals means they got in range but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through. That's great for the old confidence. And on the sideline, difference of a feeling between three and six, is it astronomical or it, no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. The touchdown, well, that tells you you're getting it done. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. 
Now Ryan on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That would have been a great catch, but real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. Ryan on the handoff. It's Freeman. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. They'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. That burst good for 20 and a first down. Brandon, they're still in the lead, but momentum's certainly been going the opposite direction. So to me, that's a really important pickup there on third down. Try and regain some confidence, and you're right. They need to stem the tide a little bit. That certainly helped. And he stopped immediately there. The tackle made by the linebacker, Arthur Motes. But it was stopped on that play. We've had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. He targets Jordan Matthews, and it's gone. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. 13 yards as the quick slant keeps the drive moving. Here's Ryan. Looking deep downfield. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Quick hands that time to knock that one away. It sure looked like a short touchdown, but able to get a good break on the football and force the incompletion. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Go. They'll try a little trickery here on the end around. And that one covered beautifully. Their defenders stayed home, and they'll stop him behind the line. Third and long, it's Ryan. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? It creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you go make a play on the football. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right? Baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And last time, the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up, whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drive is exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It yeah. was real easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. And we'll see if it's that easy here. Now it's Trubisky. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Gerald McCoy able to swap him from that defensive tackle spot for a loss of five. A rough couple of weeks for the man under center. Five sacks last week, four now this week. Do you try to design some quicker developing plays if you're an offensive coordinator? I think you do that. I think you also change his launch point at times. In other words, move your pocket to the right, to the left. Roll him out, bootleg him. Do some different things so they can't just... Back now in Cincinnati. It's the Bengals. They've got the football, but they trail here as we get rolling in quarter number four. On second down, Trubisky. Flushed out right. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. Nowhere to go downfield, but he's able to get out of bounds and stop the clock here with a first down. Sometimes guys get locked into such a groove. What do we call it? The game's slowing down. They see everything happening almost in slow motion. They see the lanes develop. I feel like he's right there. Well, and you want this from your leader, right? With this deficit, this stage of the game, second half. No quitting him. Zero. Caught on the left side. Fitzgerald. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice game there. This one goes for 20. 
I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Now Trubisky, and break, the tight end's got it. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Throwing here, Trubisky. Alshon Jeffrey, the intended receiver. And it's third and short. I think he's a little trigger happy right there. And it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. Now Trubisky to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. The touch and time are critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Oh, and now movement and a whistle, and they may have to rethink their plans on fourth down. False start, offense. Maybe anticipating a blitz, and they jumped. Yeah, and if we saw it, you know that they saw it. The bad guys might have been coming on that play. Had to pick them up, and they jumped. Here we go. It's Trubisky on fourth down. Looking for Jeffrey, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Super Bowl 49 hero Malcolm Butler. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. He's at it again, Charles. He had the pick six last week. Not a pick six here, but an interception. And it's another Oski, because that's the word we use when we intercept the pass. Oski tells your team to rally around and block for you. Well, that worked really well last week because he had made it all the way to the end zone. This week, he got the Oski, maybe not a touchdown, but boy, he's playing really well. The drive will start with a carry by Devontae Freeman. And a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. A 20th carry now for Freeman. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. On the heels of that good carry by Devontae Freeman, here's first and ten. Now Ryan going to give it to Freeman. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. On first and ten, it's Ryan. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. Now a toss right, Freeman. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here, and it'll be a third and about 13. A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. He completes it to Bryant. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. 
Now it's Ryan. This will be caught inside the 10. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Mercedes Lewis, his second touchdown on the season. And the Buccaneers here finding a way to stretch their lead. They had the lead in the fourth, but still passing. Finding under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sacked back around the eight. So tried to throw it in for two points, but the D got home, brought him down. Yeah, got home, which means there had to be good coverage. Just had nowhere to go with the ball. Typically, you try and throw quick hitters, quick slants, you know, maybe even a quick fade. Nothing was open. He ends up getting sacked. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20. Call it the 21-yard line. The Bengals getting set to go. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know what, a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. They'll run it now out of the gun. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be second and 11. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Now they'll throw it with Trubisky. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. It's a gain of 13, and the Bengals have a first down. On first and 10, it's Trubisky. Hit from behind, and he's going to be driven down. Von Miller in there to get him, and that's sack number eight for him on the year. They go play action with Trubisky. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. Now the Bengals on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This will be third and 19. From the shotgun is Trubisky. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on. A big call coming on third down. Holding offense. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. He's going to let it fly. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that's going to be just about all she wrote for this one. So they tried to go for it for Pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Defense still with three timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them here as the kneel down comes. Freeman. 
And a solid run down inside the 30. Seven yards on a carry. Make it third and four coming up. Again, they'll run with Freeman. It's a pickup of three, but it brings up what will be an interesting fourth and one. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. And boy, is he close. Did he get there? No, they're going to say he's short of the line to gain. The cornerback, it's Logan Ryan who brings him down. So they were really trying to put the nail in the coffin there already with this lead here in the fourth, but they didn't get it. Guaranteed. It's not going to be a fun handshake in the postgame, right? <laughs> you just know that there's going to be some bad blood there. And I know if we go to the postgame press conferences, the, the winning coach, you know what he's going to say, why he did it? We need the points, okay? Because you never know at the end of the year if points are going to come into the tiebreaker if we're trying to get into the playoffs. That's always the standard justification. Now Trubisky to throw on second. Caught right side is Jeffrey. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 14 seconds to go in the game. They'll throw on first down with Trubisky. The left side caught by Diggs. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. It's a gain of 13 of the Bengals have first down. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agree. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. It's complete to Diggs. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. And a timeout comes in. The whistles blow with three seconds remaining. Trubisky will come up here first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. One last shot for Trubisky. Now a desperation throw deep depth. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by Dane Crookshay. And that will write a finish to this ball game. game. Offense. So that one will be accepted. Well, Charles, it's great to win at home in the NFL. When you win on the road, it's a little extra.